How do we understand the differences of opinion between the schools of belief? Okay. <coughs> so, generally the schools of belief uh, that the majority of, um, of the Ummah has uh, followed come down to three basic schools. So the Ash'ari school and the Maturidi school. And then there's a, there was the school of the Muhaddithun, uh, which is generally known as the Athari school. Um, which was a very, very basic way of looking at Aqeedah and they didn't delve into complicated matters and they didn't take things, you know, on a, on a literal basis as well. So the Qur'an tells us basic principles that we should understand from the text of the Qur'an. <clears throat> the most, the primary one is Laysa kamithlihi shay. There's absolutely nothing like him whatsoever. So we know any you know any qualities human beings or cre creation has, such as occupying time and space, um, they can't apply to God. So we understand this directly from the text of the Quran. The the main two schools, which has been the majority of the Ummah for the majority of history. The Ash'ari and the Maturidi schools differ on around 13 uh, minor issues. And most of them are semantic differences on, you know, uh, who is considered the Shaqi and the Sa'id, the wretched, wretched and the felicitous. <clears throat> One school will say it's someone who, someone who has Iman is, is felicitous and someone who has, uh, who, who's a kafir is wretched. And others will say, no, it's actually someone who dies with Iman or someone who dies with Kufr, being wretched, uh, being felicitous or wretched, respectively. And But the first group also conditions, okay, if you live with Iman, but you have to die with Iman as well. So it comes down to the same thing. So the differences between the Ash'ari and the Maturi schools, the, the, the minor differences, um, you don't need to worry about them. You don't need to worry about them. <clears throat> there are other... Uh, uh, other approaches uh, that uh, are quite simply, you know, heterodoxical approaches, and it's not the approach um, that uh, is consistent with the teachings of the early scholars and, you know, the later scholars of this ummah. So, I mean, the simple, simple approach is learn your aqidah, study a text like the Sanusiya, the Jawhar to Tawheed, uh, Imam. Uh, Ahmad al Dardiz, uh, Al Kharidat al Bahiya, um, even uh, the Aqidah of Imam Abu Ja'far al Tahawi, and learn what these great figures of the Ummah that everyone after them has, um, uh, sorry, uh, many after them uh, of the Ummah have uh, <coughs> uh, agreed upon their righteousness and their soundness of understanding. So take that and Know your Iman, know your belief, know why you believe, know what you base it on, study it well. And then don't, don't get into these discussions. You see people constantly get into, getting into arguments and fights online and every once in a while. And you'll notice there are times of the year, like this time of the year, there's constant debates on bid'ah and what the mawlid is. And go do something productive with your life. Even if you don't just celebrate the mawlid, it's better than arguing about the deen. The Prophet wasallam guaranteed a place in, in the middle of paradise for someone who stops arguing. Wala numari fi deenillah. Imam Abu Ja'far Abu ja al-Tahawi uh, says in his aqidah, we don't argue about the religion of Allah. So in the religion of Allah was not taught to us by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for people to go argue about it on social media platforms. Um, so just don't worry about those differences, right? Learn your basic aqidah and then after that a believer's focus should be learning your fiqh and how to apply uh, this, learning about how to draw closer to Allah through worship, learning about the, the faults and flaws within yourself that's more important so you can fix them and be a better a believer as opposed to someone who's just you know arguing about no matter which group you're from right someone who someone who's an ash'ari who's arguing with someone else about x y and z if you're not a trained scholar in a scholarly setting or through writing you know written for particular individuals then why are you doing this you know because most of the time you know, I've been in arguments and you've been in arguments, you know, in life. And most of the time when you're in an argument, the truth, you know, 
goes for a walk whilst, you know, the arguer is there saying, you know, internally thinking, I don't want to be proven wrong. So, <laughs> um, I got a question the other day about um, Ijma and the consensus, whose Ijma counts? Is it the consensus of the Mujtahideen only of the Ummah or every single individual, the layman? And clearly it's only the Mujtahideen and I produced some quotes from some of the authoritative sources in uh, Usul al-Fiqh in the Hanafi school. And <clears throat> this question clearly came from uh, a layman arguing with someone, so, someone else because, you know, if you were someone who was, you know, uh, wanting to understand this properly and capable of doing so, he'd have been able to access it in one of the books. They had those little thick books right there, right behind me. He would have been, access, been able to access it. So either pay the price of learning the deen properly with its conditions in order to serve the ummah and benefit people or spend your time drawing closer to Allah through something beneficial. And Allah knows best. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah